everyone, we are happy to announce that we are running a fun back to school giveaway. This giveaway is being sponsored by Cloud Media, the creators of the Rochambeau product line, and Ameridroid, the dependable online marketplace for all things SBC. You can enter via the link in the description to our giveaway through Gleam. Just follow the required steps and you'll be entered for a full Rochambeau Rock Pro 64 based gaming setup. You will receive the following items. One Rochambeau Pro case and Rochambeau wired controller sponsored by Cloud Media. One Rock Pro 64 4GB single board computer along with power supply for the region of the world the recipient resides in sponsored by Ameridroid. One The Retro Arena custom tee with a sizing requested sponsored by The Retro Arena. And lastly, one The Retro Arena official sticker sponsored by The Retro Arena. Please make sure that you read through the official giveaway rules in the description to find out more. Everybody, it's Slappy McPhee from The Retro Arena and we're here today with another tutorial. This time around it's going to be using the audio toggle feature which will be added into the Retro Arena build natively coming up in a future update but for now for those that want to be able to use it uh, want to go ahead and share a once over to show you how to be able to perform the action. So this is something that was proven out and provided to us by Keg, one of our community members, so we're very thankful to him for this. And essentially what it's going to allow you to do is change your audio source for the output to be uh, either the HDMI or else a USB audio adapter. In this case, we will be testing with the 5H V2, which is an audio adapter that both hard kernel and Ameridroid cell. During this tutorial example, we'll be switching the audio from the television here to my uh, Harman Kardon little portable Bluetooth speaker that I have plugged in with the uh, audio cable here, three and a half or 3.5 millimeter jack. Without further ado, let's kind of get into the nuts and bolts of this. So what you're going to need to do is uh, we'll go ahead and have it on the website in the additional file section. We already have it there, however, I'm going to be uploading an updated version, mainly because of the fact that files here also take into consideration that you're going to need to replace one of your splash screen uh, scripts, excuse me, so then that way the audio knows what to do to actually take care of the audio being pushed out when you use the toggle. If you're going to use the network way to transfer or copy these files, you're going to want to log in as root with your uh, SCP software. In this case, I'm using WinSCP to SSHN. So the files that you're going to need to use, I have them right here. And that is the audio select file and the A splash screen. And those, of course, are going to have to go into two different places. Now, uh, along with this zip file that you can pull down from our website, you'll also have in there a copy of the README, which is pretty much going to give you your instructions on what you're going to do. Because of the fact that there are those users out there that don't have the ability to connect their XU4 uh, through the network, right? Uh, I'm going to actually instead go through and do this more granular with the USB option. However, just for the sake of the tutorial, you would go into the bin folder here in root and you would copy the audio select file and then you would copy the a splash screen file into the splash screen folder here excuse me directory here and you of course will have to overwrite that you know and that's happening as root okay and then you should be all set so what we're going to do now though however is we're going to take a look at how somebody would be able to take care of this instead with USB because like I said somebody might not have their XU4 connected up all the time for network you know if somebody has it in an arcade cabinet they don't have a Wi-Fi adapter on it um, you know or they don't have an Ethernet connection to it so we're gonna try to help people out with that here too so what we're gonna do here is we're going to copy these two files 
and I have got a USB key here that's empty. Well, excuse me, I already had it there. I'm going to delete it from a previous bit of work. And now I've got it pasted. And now we'll go ahead and remove it and plug it into our XU4. So the best way to work with this, of course, and obviously if you think about it, this is what you do have to do, is you're going to have to exit emulation station with a keyboard connected as well as the controller because you're going to have to be able to hand type in these commands. So now I'm going to go ahead and quit emulation station. And as you can see, we're at the terminal, right? So I am going to now simulate making these steps as if I was there on the terminal natively on the board because it's easier to perform this through the capture this way. So once you have your USB inserted, we're going to go ahead and move over to take a look here at what we've got going on for the directory structure. So you're going to want to type in df space hyphen h and you're going to look in the directory structure for what should match your USB key depending upon the size you have um, you know put in there be it an 8, 8 gig 16 gig 64 so forth etc uh, if you have this on an external hard drive same situation but normally unless you have another USB storage device plugged in you should be seeing it on media USB 0 if you do have another drive in there, then you might need to do a little bit more poking around. But, um, you know, in that case, it should come up as media slash USB one. So we're going to go ahead and take a peek in here, make sure that we're looking at the right uh, storage device here. So now I'm going to go ahead and change directory. And I'm going to go into media slash USB zero. And I'm going to do an ls to list the directory. And we see that we are in the right directory. We have our audio select script and we have our a splash screen. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to copy the audio select over to the bin folder. And that would be performing a sudo space cp for copy the name of the file. And then we're moving it to the bin directory, excuse me, copying it to the bin directory. Now the next file that we're going to need to move over, once again, copy, uh, is the a splash screen. So now I'm going to go ahead and sudo copy a splash screen dot sh. And in this case, it's going to go into opt retro arena supplementary and make sure that you spell supplementary correctly uh, because of course obviously it will come back telling you hey I don't exist if you spell it wrong all right so now we have that copied in there and as you can see it didn't prompt right as being an overwrite and that's because you're using root privileges or elevated privileges here when you did the copy. But we can go ahead and we can CDN. And in this case, just to speed things up, I'm going to go ahead and do a copy and paste and do a list again. And we see the A splash screen is there. So we know that it's there and fine. I'm going to go ahead and back out again. And now what we need to do is we need to make sure that we make the audio selection script executable. So that will take a command that we're going to go ahead and put in here. But first we need to move back into the bin directory. And once again, we're going to list. We see that the auto select script is there. And now we're going to type in sudo chmod 
plus sine x, lowercase, excuse me, not capitalized, so lowercase, slash bin, slash audio select. All right, so we now have made that executable. So now we're going to go ahead and check and see whether or not our script is going to work. So now we are going to type in the script, which is audio select. And as you can see, the script's able to run. And you'll want to pay attention to this. So you see that the platform sound 13 analog stereo is the default, right? And it's only showing one because I don't have the other one plugged in yet. I recommend not plugging in your USB sound card until you're ready to actually run this. So now I'm going to cancel. And at this point, I am going to plug my adapter in. Make sure that my speaker is on. And before I actually make this switch, what I'm going to do is do one more test to show that it's coming out of the television speakers. So we are all set with that. So now I'm going to go ahead and run the script. And now we see that there's also the USB audio. So now I'm going to go ahead and select that one. It says it's been selected to that. Let's go ahead and reboot. And we are now going to confirm to be sure that the audio is also working with the splash video and then also with an emulation station. So we've now been able to verify that the splash video has audio coming out of the USB audio adapter, as well as the music within emulation station. I had the background music turned on. So you should not run into any issues with any of your emulators. I hope that you found this tutorial to be valuable and uh, can't wait to go ahead and show you guys something coming up new on the next one. Thanks everybody. So long for now.